Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over one of the more satisfying things in chess, and that is having your opponent fall for a chess trap. We're going to be going over the top six chess traps, two main criteria that I'm using for my list. The first one is ease of use. If you have a really intricate chess trap, you're not going to see it that often. That's not going to make my list. The second one is just how much fun it is to actually have your opponent fall for this trap uh, and at the end of that coming up with a victory. The more fun, the higher up on the list it's going to be. So without further ado, let's get into the top six chess traps. The first trap is the legal trap. Starts out with e4, e5. Net f3, knight c6, pretty common, bishop to c4, pawn d6, solidifying the pawn chain here, knight to c3, bishop coming down, pinning down the knights, and pawn h3, forcing the bishop back. The bishop really should be capturing here, but if they come back to h5, this is where the legal trap can be deployed, and that is knight takes on e5. Says, yeah, if you want to pin down my knight to the queen, I don't really care because if you take my queen, that's going to end up in checkmate. No way for black to stop this. Bishop comes here to f7. The king has only one move. This d7 square is protected by the knight. King comes to e7 and then knight to d5. And this is checkmate in a very fun and interesting way. Your opponents are not going to see it coming. And that is the legal trap. Coming in number five on our list is the Blackburn Schilling Gambit Trap. And it starts out similar to the legal trap of e4, e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop to c4. But now black can play knight to d4. Now this is setting up a trap that says, yeah, go ahead and take my material here on e5. If they do take that material, the queen can come to g5. Now a couple things could happen if they are really scared about this pawn on g2. Uh, they could play something like g3. This knight's going to fall. If they see that the knight's under attack, they could come down to f7. This bishop is protecting the knight, so they could feel that this is a safe square. But unfortunately for them, it is not. The queen can now come to g2, attacking this rook. Now, if they want to hold on to this rook, they may play rook to f1. But that's going to lose to queen to e4 check. And there's no real way to stop this. If they want to give up their queen, that's fine. The knight can come in here. If they want to stop it with their bishop, then the sneaky checkmate of knight to f3. Bishop can't take here. It's being pinned down to the queen. You have a really nice checkmate. Now, if we come back and uh, we say maybe they don't want to move their rook over here to uh, f1, they could decide to capture more material. They may not see the threat that black has here. But then queen takes on h1. Bishop to f1, that's the only option that white has. Queen to e4, check. Same thing as before. We see that the queen's going to fall here on e2. If they play the bishop to e2, then bishop c5. And this is going to end up in a checkmate. There's no way for white to stop this. Uh, I'll give you the quick version here if you haven't seen this position before. Knight to c3, knight to f3 three check as we've seen before it's not mate though because the king can come over here to f1 but now queen to h4 and this is the threat right here queen coming to f2 this would be a checkmate really forced to come over here but there's going to be a checkmate pretty soon after that Coming at number four on our list is the Elephant Trap. Starts out with d4, d5, c4, the Queen's Gambit line. e6, going to decline that line. Knight to c3, knight f6, and then bishop to g5, pinning down the knight to this queen here. Knight to d7 as a continuation, defending this. And then after the pawn takes, which is fairly common from white, the pawn can recapture. Now, white may have a sense that he can just come in and take this pawn. Since the knight's blocking this queen here, he may say, yeah, he can't recapture with his knight. That bishop is pinning down the knight to the queen. That's exactly what we want white to think. Because after he takes here on d5, black can take the knight. 
doesn't even matter that the queen is exposed here. If the bishop comes down and takes here on d8, that's going to be completely fine. Bishop plays up here to b4. The only legal move that white has is to play queen to d2. After the bishop takes, the king is going to recapture, and the king takes here on d8. Black is up a good amount of material here, so that is the elephant trap. Coming in at number three on our list is the Lasker Trap. Starts out with d4, d5, c4, the queen's gambit line, and then e5. This is the Albin counter gambit. If you don't play much Albin counter gambit, you should rethink the decisions in your life. But in this trap, we're going to see the pawn take on e5, which is pretty common. And then black pushing forward with d4. It is defended by the queen here. can always gobble up this material later. And you may see white play e3 now this is a mistake here but he may say hey yeah if you want to go ahead and take here i'll exchange my queen down here i have a good center control here blacks instead of taking going to play his bishop to b4 check and pretty common to see the bishop come to d2 and now we continue along with our trap and that is the pawn taking here on e3 now they could think that yeah i'll go ahead and take your bishop right here this is a mistake by black because then you're going to play your queen down here the king's going to recapture doesn't matter if you take with your pawn right here white's going to be up in material unfortunately for white black has other things up his sleeves and if he does take with his bishop here on b4 then the pawn's going to take here on f2 this is check the king comes to e2 and now the critical move and that is the pawn takes here on g1 can turn into any piece it wants to. It's going to turn into a knight check. And a couple things are going to happen. Either A, the king is going to move away from the queen and the queen is going to fall. Or if the king comes back here to e1, queen comes to h4 check, king to d2, not in the best spot. And then knight to c6. While there's not an immediate check made, black has so many different options to attack his opponent. Not every day you can say that you have three knights on the board as well. That's a fun check mark that you get to put off your uh, list of chess accomplishments all in of itself. So uh, if nothing else, getting three knights for the Lasker Trap, having your opponent fall in, and then just chase his king around the rest of the game gets its place to number three on the list. Coming in number two on our list is the England Gambit Trap. Starts out with D4, E5. Yes, this is a real opening, and if you haven't played it, definitely recommend it. Pawn takes here. Knight C3 attacking the pawn. White usually tries to hold on to the material. Bishop to E7 if they continue with Bishop to F4 to hold on this material. Then we're going to play Queen to B4. This is check. Also attacking their Bishop here on F4. They're usually going to bring their Bishop back here. Attack the Queen. Queen's going to come take on b2, and then the failed move from white's standpoint is bishop c3. Feels like it's good. Attacking the queen, can't take the rook here on a1. It's defended by the knight on b1, but unfortunately, it's going to fail to bishop to b4. It's just no real good way for white to continue. If he tries to block off with his queen here, could just take with his bishop. Queen takes. Sure, queen's going to come up here. That is going to be checkmate. If instead takes with his knight here. Sure, go ahead and take the rook here on a1. Knight comes back. Could see an exchange in the center of the board. Black is just, hey, free rook right here. So it does have some options if instead of the queen coming here, could just take with the bishop here. Knight takes on b4, and there's just no real good way for white to continue. Wants to hold on to the rook here on a1, but if he plays knight 2 c3, well, that's going to fail. Just just the queen takes here. Uh, if instead he brings his knight to a3 as well, he's trying to open up for the queen to protect this, that's also going to fail as well. So no real way to hold on to this. So really, while he thinks that the bishop coming here to c3 is going to net him a good position here in the center of the board, unfortunately that is the trap we are laying. Very easy for them to fall into, very easy for us to execute. So that is the England Gambit Trap coming in at number two. Coming at number one on the list is the fishing pole trap. Two main reasons I have it number one. The first one is you just have so many opportunities to play it. It derives from the Rye Lopez. 
You're going to play knight to f6, they castle on the king side, and then you play the very odd move, knight to g4. Second reason I like it is once you actually get this to land, it's just one of the more satisfying things you'll ever play in chess. They will usually play h3. You're trying to kick your knight back off, and you play h5, says, I do not care what you're doing. Go ahead and take my knight. That's fine. If they do this, you attack their knight. Knight comes back to e1, and then queen h4, and there's no way to stop mates from here. You're threatening the queen coming up here to h1 or h2, if they try to open up for their king to move on this f2 pawn or f2 square, it doesn't really matter. You just play g3 and then there's going to be a mate followed shortly thereafter. Even if they don't play e1, you still have a lot of attacking opportunities. You're going to have an extremely good game, but ah, so satisfying they play back to e1 thinking they're in a good spot. And then you come play queen to h4, and they just realize that the game is over very, very shortly. So those are my six top chess traps. There are a lot more chess traps on my website. I'll have a link below if you're watching this on YouTube. There are a ton of chess traps. These are just my favorite uh, top six. Would love to hear from y'all what your favorite chess trap is. Uh, if you have one that you have actually had someone fall into, would love to know that as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely make sure you check out the link below if you want to check out more chess traps. I'll see you guys.